What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog back with my Browns Seahawks preseason week three recap. As the Browns wrapped up their 2024 preseason against the Seattle Seahawks. And heading into the week, of course, there was a lot of talk about will Deshaun Watson play? And there was actually belief amongst the fan base and even in the organization, that Deshaun Watson would get some snaps tonight. Well, as we got closer to game time, it started to sound more and more like Deshaun was not going to play. And then, right around the time that the inactive list was released, word got out that Deshaun Watson was not going to play. And I know that disappointed a lot of Browns fans, including me, because, of course, I wanted to see Deshaun Watson on the field with some of these starters. Now, there's a reason why I really wasn't as mad as a lot of Browns fans were on Twitter. And that simply, look at this offensive line. <sighs> yeah. Especially the left side. Now, I'm not going to hate on Zach Zinter. He's actually pretty good. But Jermaine Afidi? Did you really think they were going to put Deshaun Watson out there with Jermaine Afidi protecting his blind side? Nah. Once I saw this, I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I just hope Deshaun Watson doesn't look rusty week one, right? Against the Cowboys, when it gets serious, right? Like, we're talking live fire. Like, the bullets are live and firing all over the place. Right? Like, there's no holding back now. The games matter. There's no more preseason. It would have been cool to see Deshaun Watson and Jerry Judy and company at least get a drive tonight, but unfortunately, they didn't play. But nevertheless, Offense looked good. Of course, Jameis Winston got the start. He went 6 of 9 for 63 yards. Got sacked one time. Then came Dorian Thompson Robinson. And he looked good, as usual. 11 of 20 for 115 yards and a touchdown. Got sacked once for one yard. And then came Tyler Huntley to finish it up. And boy, did he show out. 17 of 22. 146 yards and three touchdowns, two of which to Michael Woods, the second. He cooked. Now on the ground, Brown's running backs combined for 21 carries and 103 yards. The leading rusher was Aiden Robbins, who had eight carries for 38 yards. And through the air, Jamari Thrash. Yeah, he's going to be something. That's for sure, if they use him right. I mean, just imagine Jamari Thrash lining up, maybe like in the slot, alongside Jerry Judy and Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore. Oh yeah, he'll get his opportunities for sure. But he had four receptions for 73 yards and a touchdown. Michael Woods, as I mentioned, five receptions, 53 yards, two touchdowns. And James Prochet even had a touchdown to go along with five receptions and 26 yards. So good stuff out of the receivers, right? We even saw Dustin Hopkins tonight, too. Yeah, he even had a kick, and he made it, like always. <laughs> Defensively, not really much to write home about. They did get two sacks, one from Diabate and one from Oba Okoronkwo, which is awesome, right? Because, of course, we're going to be seeing a lot of him this year out there with Miles and Zadarius and Alex Wright and those guys. Yeah, the defensive line's going to be real good if they can stay healthy, right? Jim Schwartz is going to love this defensive unit. And the best part is, we pretty much brought everybody back. So there's that instant chemistry right there. Love to see it. Now, uh, getting into my post-game observations. Number one, like I said, DTR looked great. And Tyler Huntley cooked. Oh, he cooked all right. 
He'd cook like a damn master chef out there. Moving the ball effectively, even using his legs at times. Aside from a couple drops. Yeah, they look good. Number two, Andrew Barry will be a busy man. Because you look at our roster, there are definitely some holes to fill. Offensive line, linebacker, secondary. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. I've mentioned it before. You know, I mean, Denzel Ward out with a concussion. Greg Newsom coming back from hamstring surgery. MJ Newsom's a straight up dog, but he's only one person. Cam Mitchell's all right. Other than that, you don't really have much at corner. It'll be interesting to see if they address the position either in free agency or waiver wire or trade. I'm sure they will, especially because Andrew Barry is known to be very aggressive when it comes to addressing needs. And then, finally, number three, week one, here we come. Like I said, it's time to get serious. Because them bullets will be flying around out there week one, right? And I need this team to be ready. I need this defense to be hungry. I need them to go out there and wreak havoc against the Cowboys. I want to see Miles Garrett put the rookie guiding on his ass a couple times. And of course, I want to see him sack Dak like five times. Maybe force a couple strip sacks, right? <laughs> yeah, strip sack Dak. Yeah. And then, of course, we'll see if C.D. Lamb gets signed or whatever. I did hear the Cowboys lost Deron Bland for a while. So we'll see how uh, they match up with Jerry Judy and Amari and Elijah and maybe Jamari Thrash or any other receivers we might bring in. You know? It's going to be a very interesting couple of days for the Browns when it comes to this roster. Because, like I said, they have some holes to fill. Now moving on to my game MVP. I'm going to go Michael Woods. He had two tutties today. He looked real good. He looked like a guy that was trying to make this roster. There were guys tonight that looked like they were pretty much done for. Like they were going to be cut for sure. Then there's guys like Michael Woods. He was out there playing his ass off trying to make this roster. Trying to show Andrew Barry and company that he deserves another chance on this team. Of course, he was on this team last year, but he got hurt very early. Like before camp started, I'm pretty sure. He was working out with some other receivers off-site, and he got hurt. And then later on, he got suspended. So, yeah, this is his uh, retribution season, right? Show everybody that he's still that dude. Because he was good in college, right? So we'll see what happens with Michael Woods. Of course, the position he plays is very crowded. We'll see how many guys we keep. At receiver. Now, if I had to name a preseason MVP, I'd say Jameis just because of his freaking pregame speeches. Like they were absolutely elite. That alone makes me happy we brought him in. <laughs> just like straight up. Like he might not play the entire year, but man, have him give the pregame speech every freaking week. I do not care. That dude could hype me up. To freaking run through a brick wall at 100 miles per hour. If that was possible. Like straight up. No protection. Like I will get up out of my chair. And run through this wall. After listening to a Jameis Winston speech. Like straight up. That's what he does. He's awesome at it. Like, you know. There's guys that wouldn't be able to motivate me to eat a damn sandwich. Then there's him. I would literally willingly like jump out my window face first after listening to him do a speech, man. He gets me going. Even though he didn't really look that good in the preseason. But oh well. It's preseason. All that matters is one, you look good, and two, you get out healthy. And we pretty much did both. Somewhat. Especially tonight. So yeah, with that being said. That's all I got. As always, uh, it was fun streaming the preseason games. And now, it gets real. And I cannot wait for week one.
Of course, so this is a reminder to hit the like button, subscribe, hit that bell on this video, as uh, there will be a lot of roster moves coming all around the league. And I know Andrew Barry is going to look at this roster. He's going to see what needs to be addressed, and hopefully he goes out there and addresses it. And when he does, if it's a big move, a signing, a trade, whatever, a claim, a waivers, if it's a big name, I'm not going to make a video for some low-level name. No. I'll add it to, like, another video, but I'm not going to make a video just about that. But, yeah, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of moves coming over the next couple of days. I believe deadline day for uh, roster cuts is Tuesday the 27th. So, that's all I got. We'll see what happens. But it's going to be absolute chaos in the league over the next couple of days. That's why I say you better subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I go live and post videos because it's going to get crazy. I'm going to have a lot of videos coming out. And, of course, on Monday, I'll be doing my initial 53-man roster prediction based off of, you know, if anyone was cut already. But that'll be coming out on Monday. So, uh, yeah, can't wait for that. But with that being said, I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go, Browns. Again, Browns lost tonight, 37-33, in a game that, again, doesn't matter. But overall, they look good. That's all you can say. They look good, right? They kept up with the Seahawks, made some mistakes, but they'll learn. And uh, now it's time to cut this roster down to 53 and then prepare for the Cowboys. But with that being said, I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go, Browns. And I'll see you guys later. I'm out. Bye-bye. Yeah, go Browns. Woohoo! Woo-woo-woo! I'm for you, Dallas. Mm.